Welcome to this tutorial on legislation and context, where you will be guided through the important aspects of how law is made and subsequently altered or explained. Legislation in England and Wales is made by Parliament. Broadly, this consists of statutes or acts and statutory instruments which are regulations, orders and rules. In addition, there is case law. All of this is usually supported by guidance. Statutes are the principles of law which form the backbone of UK legislation and upon which the court acts. Statutory instruments provide further details, procedures and timescales. As the law itself is written in a way that sometimes can be inaccessible for the layman, guidance unwraps the legal jargon and puts it into the required context. Guidance is regularly published about SEN law and can be found in the latest SEN Code of Practice 2015. In addition to guidance, a teacher or education professional should always familiarise themselves with any standards that are relevant, such as the teacher standards and the policies produced by their local authorities and their own schools. Case law constantly changes how law is interpreted. Judgments and case law are particularly important as the doctrine of precedent applies. This means that the judgment of each case can bind all subsequent cases depending on the seniority of the court. The court system has a hierarchy of structure. As such, case law becomes part of the law by either setting legal precedents where there is no other legislation or by interpreting current legislation. Judgments that are relevant to your teaching are often reported in the teaching press and passed to schools through circulars from the Department of Education or your local authority. Teachers should always be aware of specific legislation, guidance, standards and policies. A good practical start is to become familiar with the Special Educational Needs and Disability Code of Practice, the Teacher Standards, the Ofsted School Inspection Handbook and Ofsted Guidance on how Ofsted evaluates SEND provisions in schools, your own individual school policies and any individual education, health and care plans that are relevant. It is worth bearing in mind that the law changes faster than the guidance is produced, so you have a responsibility to keep up with any new statutes, statutory instruments, cases or amendments that are relevant. Any new acts or statutory instruments can either stand alongside existing legislation, they can make changes to existing acts or completely remove acts from the statute book. Changes in government policies can require new statutes and will facilitate changes in practice. This sometimes happens wholesale in education. Whilst the amount of law in relation to SEND is vast, it is usually covered by guidance and embedded into good practice within schools. However, it is your responsibility to become the expert in your own field, which when dealing with children or young people who have complex needs means that you may encounter issues outside the norm for those working in mainstream education. Significant acts that should be considered for further study are the Chronically Sick and Disability Persons Act 1970, the Education Act of 1996, the Equality Act of 2010, the Care Act of 2014, the Children and Families Act. Please don't panic. Guidance to education, SEND issues and law are usually widely reported in the education press and by local authorities through school leadership forums and circulars. The Times Educational Supplement, TES for short, is also a great place to keep up with the challenging landscape. To supplement this tutorial, I suggest the following further reading. The SEND Code of Practice, the Teacher Standards, the Ofsted School Inspection Handbook, and how Ofsted evaluates SEND provisions in school, and not forgetting, as already mentioned, your own individual, specific policies and any relevant educational health and care plans. Thank you.